just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it So now we're at the point of the off season, which is everybody's favorite because so many lists come out. Top five this, top ten that, who's the best at this, who's the worst at that. And you know Ravens fans, you know how we get. We take things very, very personal. And we like, hey man, the Ravens, they too low on this list. Hey, they need to be at least here on this list. We never complain about them being too high anywhere. But we always will call out, hey, this, what is this person? Do they know what they're talking about? They probably don't. And this was probably no different. My guy hit me up on Instagram. My guy Fred, he hit me up on Instagram. And he said, they just keep disrespecting us. And I was like, well, I said, let me see what my guy talking about. Let me, let me see what he's talking about. And what he sent me was a list. Uh, and ESPN on their Instagram, they listed the top 10. But it's obviously a list of 32. And what's, the list is which QB has the best supporting cast. ESPN's Bill Barnwell ranks all 32 teams based on their wide receivers, running backs, and tight ends. I'm like, okay, best supporting cast. I'm like, Lamar, Lamar got something to work with now. Because the Ravens, they, they done done some things. So shout out to Eric DeCosta. Thank you again. But let's just go through the top 10. Uh, number one was the 49ers. And the 49ers, whether it's going to be Brock Purdy, whether it's going to be Trey Lance, whether it's going to be Sam Donald, whoever's going to be. And I forget that they signed him a lot of times. But whoever's going to be, they have. Christian McCaffrey, a running back, George Kittle, tight end, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and Kyle Juszczyk at fullback, slash tight end, slash H-back, slash whatever you want, whatever role you want to give him. You know Kyle Juszczyk could do it all. But anyway, we miss him in Baltimore, too. I mean, we Baltimore, that's one thing. They know how to breed fullbacks, even though no, don't nobody really use fullbacks like that. But Baltimore, they good at breeding fullbacks. But anyway, another conversation for another day. So San Francisco 49ers were number one. Number two, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Earth Smith Jr., Joe Mixon. Not mad at it. Uh, no, because Joe Burrow, he, he like set right now. Number three, the Eagles. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas uh, Goddard, DeAndre Swift, who they traded for, I believe, and Rashad Penny. So, okay, that's, that's a nice little group right there, too. Number four, the Seattle Seahawks, D.K. Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, uh, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, who uh, we ain't seen him play down in the NFL yet, but... It's nice, the more the merrier. Uh, Kenneth Walker Jr., running back, and Noah Fanta tight end. Number five, the Los Angeles Chargers. Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Quentin Johnson, Gerald Everett. Six, the Minnesota Vikings, Justin Jefferson. Jordan Addison, KJ Osborne. TJ Hawkinson, Alexander Madison. Number seven, the Dallas Cowboys, CD Lamb, who's about to get paid. Uh, Michael Gallup, Brandon Cooks, Tony Pollard, Deuce Vaughn. Number eight, the Dolphins, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Jeff Wilson Jr., Raheem Mostert, uh, Devin Okay, I'm not sure who he is. I don't, I don't know anything about him. I'm naive to him, but the Dolphins. I would actually probably put the Dolphins a little bit higher, but that's just me. Number nine, oh, the Jaguars. The Jaguars. Uh, it's Travis e e e Etienne Jr., uh, Calvin Ridley, who just got back, which is nice for him. Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, and Evan Ingram. Okay, they, they okay. Okay, now, now, now I'm starting to see a little bit why I feel like the, the Ravens are disrespected. Then number 10, the Atlanta Falcons, Bijan Robinson, Tyler um, Algier, another running back, another running back, Cordell Patterson. So they listed three running backs for the Falcons. Three running backs. Uh, wide receiver Drake London and tight end Kyle Pitts. Okay, now initially when he was like, oh yeah, Ravens got disrespected. I started going through the beginning of the list. I'm like, no, they didn't. But uh, once I got to like uh, number eight, even though number eight was the Dolphins. But I feel like the Dolphins should be high. I don't feel like they should be as low as eight. But definitely, uh, I feel like you could throw the Ravens in here, like, for sure. But let's see Bill Barnwell's reasoning why and how he put these lists together. He said, it's time for one of my favorite annual offseason features. I've taken a close look at the playmakers for each NFL 32 teams and ranked them worst to first for what they could do in the 2023 campaign, all else being equal. I say could and not will, of course, because this is a thought exercise. I'm not trying to project which team will have the best offense this season. Instead, I'm trying to separate out teams' playmakers as running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends exclusively to estimate how they will perform outside of their current offense. Ah, okay, that's something to consider right there, too. Oh, I didn't even think about that. He said, in other words, if we gave every team an average quarterback, offensive line, and play calling, and had them play at an average pace, which would have the league's best offense? That is very interesting. 
Let's continue. He said it. This is a long article, so I won't belabor the point. What I need to do before we start, though, is go through the rules I used as I formulated these rankings. So, he said, this is only about on-field performance for the 2023 season. He also said, injury history and suspensions matter, and wide receivers are weighted more heavily than running backs or tight ends, and the focus is on elite players and a team's top five contributors. Efficiency matters. And then also, one more thing, just to remind you again, this does not include quarterbacks. Doesn't include quarterbacks. Because like he said, um, he's acting as if the, the team had an average quarterback, an average offensive line, average coaching and all that. So it does not include their current situation. It talks about how he feels they would be in any situation. So um, obviously the Ravens were not in the top 10. But they did make the top 15. As a matter of fact, they made number 15. And let's see exactly why he ranked them where he ranked them. So number 15, the Baltimore Ravens. They're 2022 ranked. So last year, they were, they were ranked 25. I, I can see why. And then, But the previous year, they were ranked number 14. So it's like, huh? They were ranked that high in 2021? Now, if, if it's me, like looking at it, I would probably rank this group higher than I would rank 2021. But let's see why. He said, welcome to the most difficult set of playmakers to rank on this list. Right then and there. Boom. Okay. I get it. That opening statement is perfect for the Baltimore Ravens. Because, again, take out Lamar Jackson because it's not including quarterbacks. Mark Andrews. You know who he is. You know what he can do. You know what he's capable of. He's been doing it every season. Great. But then you go to wide receivers. Go to Odell Beckham Jr. It gets tricky there already because we know what he's capable of. We know what he's done. But he didn't play last year. And then there's been a bit of the injury history over time. Rashad Bateman, not the same thing, but we've seen him play, and when he plays, he can play, he can ball, but there's just been the injury history, and there's a lot of the unknown, but when he's on the field, he can play. Um, then you go to the running backs, you think about J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, when they play, them boys can play, but there's the injury history, especially with J.K. Dobbins, especially with him expecting to be the lead back, even though it's going to be backed by committee. Uh, he's going to be sharing carries with Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, maybe even Keith Mitchell. We'll see. But there's, there's just a lot of unknown there. So I could get, based off of that alone, why he would make that perfect opening statement um, about the Baltimore Ravens, that they're the most difficult set of playmakers to rank on this list. But let's continue. He said, on paper, the Ravens have a team that should, be com that should comfortably be in the top ten. That's what I said. I feel like they, they should definitely be in the top 10 based off of the people who they got in the top 10. But he said, J.K. Dobbins has, has averaged just under six yards per carry as a pro. Rashad Bateman ranked six in the NFL in yards per route run over the first eight weeks of 2022. Odell Beckham Jr. was last seen putting together a 288-yard stretch over three and a half games as the Rams won the Super Bowl. Zay Flowers was a force at Boston College and might be the best wideout in the 2023 draft class. Oh, I like it. Mark Andrews has ranked in the top five among tight ends and fantasy points in each of the past four seasons and yet outside of Andrews can we count on any of those players that's that's a valid point that's a valid point and it, it doesn't sound good to hear but it's a valid point because it's true it's the injuries the big that's the biggest thing uh, and he said Dobbins missed all the 2021 and the chunks of 2022 recovering from a knee injury he has played more than 50 percent of the off offensive snaps in a game just eight times over three seasons Backup Gus Edwards missed all of 2021 and eight games a year ago. Beckham didn't play in 2022 while recovering from a torn ACL. Uh, while Bateman was sidelined by a Liz Frank injury and needed a cortisone shot during OTAs. This depth chart looks great on paper, but what other chances the Ravens get anything close to full seasons from everyone involved? See, that, that would be great if they could, though. That'd, that'd be amazing. Obviously, we know that. That'd be amazing if they could go get four seasons from everybody. But he continued, Flowers looms as a potential beneficiary if the guys in front of him can't stay healthy. While college health isn't always indi indicative of what will happen at the pro level, see Frank Gore and Paris Campbell, uh, Flowers had no trouble staying on the field, catching 200 passes over four seasons. Simply being available might give him the inside track to snaps when Baltimore is in two wide out sets. I, we get that. We get that because, yeah, again, we know the history. We know the history of Bait. And Beckham, uh, and hopefully history does not repeat itself, and they can be full goal because if they are full goal, ooh, hands they flowers, ooh, it just everybody, man, everybody, that because that's been Baltimore Ravens' biggest enemy, health, man, it's been health, but y'all know that already. Anyway, I uh, said the Ravens have better depth than most at receiver. Nelson Aguilar was miscast as a starter with the Patriots, but he's an above-average fourth wideout, especially. If the Ravens return him to field stretcher role, to the field stretcher role in which he excelled with the Raiders. 
And yeah, it is nice to have him as a depth guy. That, that's a beautiful thing when you really think about it. I know when they first signed him this offseason, it was looking a little scary. I know I was scared. I was like, oh boy, I know these Ravens, and is that going to be the move at wide receiver? But they followed it up with some nice moves too as well, in addition to that. Um, it says, uh, Isaiah Likely was impressive as a receiving tight end in his rookie campaign, earning targets at the league's sixth highest rate among those at the position with 100 or more routes. He will afford the team more flexibility in resting Andrews when new offensive coordinator Todd Munkin chooses to go with a single tight end. Yes, that is very true because it's depth, quality depth. Don't forget Charlie Kolar too. We ain't get to see much from him last year. But I know a lot of people are real high on Charlie Kolar. But with uh, Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, uh, and the, all the depth at wide receiver, it just depth. It gives the Ravens quality depth. So... <laughs> It's not done, and I mean, they've been doing a lot of stuff by committee. Um, as far as wide receivers, they have really haven't been having that guy at wide receiver. They've been having a lot of those guys, but the way that they set this thing up this year, hopefully this list, we can look at this list after this year is over and be like, 15, man? <laughs> we should have threw that list in the garbage a long time ago. But hopefully the Ravens can show why they can really be certainly a top 10 unit on this list, but... I'm even thinking top five, baby. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.